Morning. How is everybody? Good. Since it's uh, after Christmas and we can talk about it, how many of y'all cook Christmas dinner? Yeah, I see that. I helped my wife. Y'all believe that? We, we had this ham and we make the stuff we baste it in as we're cooking. And every time I get it, I'd get me a little pinch, you know. <laughs> I had to sneak it because she was watching, but I'd get one every now and then. Anyhow, good Lord blessed us. And we went to my son's house and we had big dinner. And I was just thinking about Christmas and how people are a little more humble and a little more kind after Christmas or during Christmas, aren't they? We think about people who are less fortunate than we are. And we donate to different charities and we do different work for people and we're a little nicer close to Christmas. Christmas is for celebrating Christ's birth. And thank God we can still do it. Amen? Now, here we are, the week after Christmas. How many still got Christmas lights? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How many of us still has Christ in our life? Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. We shouldn't turn Christmas off because It's part of Christ. It's celebrating his birth. So let's not pack when we're packing up all of our Christmas lights and our things that represent a Merry Christmas in America, and it's real commercialized, I realize that. But as you're packing up to put away for next year, don't pack Christ up with it and forget about him. Let him live in your life all year long, amen? Amen. That's what we need more of today in the United States than anything at all, is more of Christ in our life. Now, we, as his children, need him each and every day. And are we looking for him? Are we trying to find him? Or is uh, or has the old devil kind of got us to the side and says, what are you doing this for? Well, you just tell him, I'm doing it for Christ. I'm doing it for Sam Cain. I'm doing it because I love Christ, and I want to go to heaven where he is. That's what we need to be thinking. Let's don't pack him up and put him away. Okay. Now that Christmas is over, how are you? Did, you, did Christmas make you think of things that were important to you? Did it call back remembrances of Christmas's past, of people you loved and lived with who are now gone? Where are you today with God in your life? Did the things that you receive make your life any better? Did those things make you any happier? Were they, did they have the effect they were supposed to have when you've seen all that advertising? If you'll buy this, this will make you happy and you can do this. Did those things, did the maternal or the material things of this world make you feel any better? Hmm, think about it. Or did remembering Christ, whoo, and the things that he had furnished you in this past year <laughs> recall in your life? Did you thank him for the things that you've overcome in your daily life through this past year? (laughs) This is the Christ we need not to pack up, but keep in our hearts and our lives. We need him each and every day, more than ever before. We need God more than anything. And... You know what's good? We can have him. Woo! Amen! We can have him. 
He is here, amen, and he wants us to have him in our life. There's one thing, we just have to meet his condition, amen? And it's not very hard if you can believe in Christ Jesus that he came here and suffered, bled, and died for our sins, and he was God's son sent to separate us from our sins and suffer, bleed, and die, and and again, we can believe that he rose the third day. We can have him in our hearts and lives. Christ loves us. And he wants us to love him. Amen? Amen. So, are you glad it's over for one more year? I've heard people say that. I've even said it myself. Well, I'm glad I don't have to do this no more. I'm glad this is over with for this year. How many said that? All of us. Right? Every one of us. Come on, I see a lot of people grinning. <laughs> but it's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> Are you ready to go to the next job or the next project or anything else other than Christmas? I've heard people say that too. I'm ready to get back to my life. Amen? But if you're getting back to the gut, your life without Christ, then you're wrong. You hear me? If you're getting back to your life and your life don't include Christ, you're wrong. You need not to pack him up, but keep him in your heart and your life each and every day. We don't need to pack Christ up. Trust me on one thing. If we pack Christ up and turn our backs on him, what happens when the next crisis comes? And there's crisis in our life, and they're going to come. Are you going to try to unpack and dig out through everything and find God? You might not be able, and you might not have time to find him. He might come or call just like that. You're gambling when you separate yourself from God. You're gambling that he'll give you another opportunity to have him back in your heart and your life. God says his spirit would not always strive with man. If he's in your life and you know God's spirit and you can feel him in your life, you praise God, amen? Because you've got him, don't turn him loose because there's no guarantee if you do that he'll come back. You don't have that guarantee. We need to keep him close. To keep Christ in our life is a daily walk. Hear me? It's a daily walk. And we need to stay near to Christ. And if we stay near to him and let him guide us, listen to me, our lives will be better. They will be blessed, amen? And they will have him and his spirit with us in our daily walk. What's better than having Christ in your life? Nothing. I don't care how many presents you got, what they were, how big they were, how much money they cost, you're not going to find anything that will replace Christ in your life. Amen? Amen. There's no replacement, amen. Not in this whole world, there's no replacement for the love of God in your life. Amen? Amen? We need this Christ in our life. We need him more today than ever before. And more people today are turning their backs on him. There's less people in church today. If you get to reading the church facts, it'll scare you to death. From people who are turning their backs and packing up God for another year. So don't pack him up. Keep him close. Because you could need him the next very minute. Because we don't know when he's going to come or call. I do a lot of reading and I found a story about people and Christmas. I suppose it was over in, in December 24th. But the spiritual standpoint, it's never over. Amen? 
from the Christian calendar point of view, Christmas actually begins on Christmas Day, which is followed by (laughs) 12 days, amen, till January the 5th. 12 days of Christmas. Yes, Virginia, there are really 12 days of Christmas. Let's keep Christ close. Let's just not cut him off at 12. Let's keep Christ in our hearts and life 365 days of the year. Can you imagine if people would keep the goodness of God in their life all year long? How much better this world would be today, amen? It would be really a good place to live. Amen? Now we have communities that are great and I thank the Lord for our community and I thank the Lord for our church and the good people therein. But if we kept God close each and every day of our life, 365 days a year, our community would be better. Amen? And it would overflow and it would affect somebody else. Amen? That's the way God's plan works. So don't pack Christ up with the Christmas ornaments. Or when you're taking down your tree... Don't pack him in that box. If you have a live tree, don't throw him out. Amen? Keep him close because we need him. We need him every day in our life. How many of us think about God every day? We should. We should talk to him every day. We should thank him every morning when we wake up. Amen? And I've told the church this. I had a boss who said, don't you go to bed at night without talking to the good Lord. Amen? So if you'll thank him when you get up and if you'll thank him before you go to sleep and hold him close, God will stay near. Amen? Keep him close. Don't pack him away with the Christmas packaging and with the ornaments and with the tree. Keep him in your heart and life. I know all this gets confusing since Christmas... How we operate is supposed to have two calendars, one for the citizens of God's kingdom and one for the citizens of this earth. Amen? The citizens of God's kingdom never quit serving Christ. Amen? They keep him in their hearts and their life, and that's where we need to be. The people of the world keep the other calendar who just serve God or don't ever serve God, but think about him maybe at Christmas time when they give someone else a Christmas present. Amen? But even then, it's good to know that Christ is on their minds at that point in time. Amen? In our world today, we have gotten so far away from the really true meaning of Christmas, which is a Savior for each and every one of us. Amen? He is our Lord and Savior. He is the reason that we can feel this spirit of love in our hearts and life today is keeping him close. We have so many blessings in our lives through the goodness and the grace of God. It was by his grace that we are saved. It's by his grace that we are alive. It's by his grace that we are his children. Amen. Amen. Don't you want to be one of God's children? Amen. His grace is sufficient, it says, for all of us. Amen. Don't pack him up. Don't put him away. Keep him in your heart and your life all year long. Christmas is good, Gary, and I love to eat as well as anybody, and I love the Christmas dinners, and I love the getting together with all of my family, but it's still not complete without Christ in our lives. Amen? It's still not complete without Christ in our lives. So, we're fixed to face a new year. If you don't know the Lord, what better time than now to get him in your heart and life to take you through the new year. And if you already know him, 
just thank him, amen, for looking over you for this year and for what he's going to do for us and help us in the year to come. I thank him for his many blessings this morning. I know without him, I would be in trouble. I know that he loves me. I know he loves you. Take him for his promises. Take his word and use it in your heart and your life. In Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the 6th verse, For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry. Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus the Lord, for thus said the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chiefs of the nations, publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Y'all know that Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. We know that Jeremiah prophesied and was a prophet for God that predicted the demise of Israel. And even Jeremiah, they were going to kill. They threw him in a, in a cistern that was broken and it was just muddy. And they left him there to die. But God sent people to fish him out. But they didn't like to hear what Jeremiah was saying. They shall come weeping and with supplication. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way. Wherein they shall not stumble. For I am the father to Israel. And Ephraim is my Firstborn. Hear ye the Lord, O ye nations, declare in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattereth Israel will be glad gathering him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the land of him that was stronger than he. Therefore shall therefore they shall come and sing at the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more. God's going to gather his people back. Amen. And he's going to bless us. And we're going to praise and worship him forever. This was in the old Bible. This was something that Jeremiah saw. Even though he saw the worst, he saw Israel turn from God and been captured and beaten and carried off as slaves and bond people to another country, to another world as they knew it. But he knew God had a plan to restore them. Amen. God gave him that knowledge. Jeremiah didn't see it in his lifetime. He did see the people of Israel scattered among the world. But he didn't see God bring them back. God is wanting his people to come to him today. Amen. We have God's word to help us come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, if you'll turn in John, the first chapter, 10th verse. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Does our world know God today? Does our world... Our world seek Christ today? Does our world know God? Less and less. Some people do. 
He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Amen? Have you believed this day? Are you become the sons of God? You can, amen, if you believe on Christ Jesus. That's open to us today, and we need to heed God's word and do what he tells us so we can become his children, amen. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. It's of God's will that we exist today. It's of God's will that we have a plan of salvation. It's of God's will that we can be saved. Amen. It is God's will that we all come to repentance and shun the devil's hell. Amen. Are you ready to meet the conditions that God has? Are you ready to have him close in your heart and in your life? Verse 14. And the word, listen to me. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Woo, amen. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, amen. Well, amen. Christ is full of grace and truth. Amen. That grace saves us from the devil's hell and the truth sets us free. Amen. The truth of God will set you free. It lets you know that you belong to him and you can believe and have his spirit in your heart and your life. Don't pack him up. Keep him with you all year. <laughs> Live for him and keep him close. John bare witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And his fullness have all we received. Woo! And grace for grace. Well, amen. God's grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace is sufficient for all of us. Woo! His grace. Is how we make it to heaven. His grace is how we feel his presence. When we meet his condition, God will visit us and be with us. He loves us and he loves to share in your life. Amen. Keep him close. Don't pack him up. And of his fullness have all we received and his grace for grace. Well, amen. <laughs> Are you living in the fullness of Christ? <laughs> amen. <laughs> we all got to answer that question. Amen. Are we living in the fullness of Christ? Have we done everything that God wants us to? Amen. We've all fall short. We, the word teaches us that. But where we understand things is that grace forgives us of our shortcomings when we recognize the fact that we have, amen. And he's willing and humble and ready to accept us, amen. <laughs> where are we this morning with God? Have we already packed him up for another year? Have we already decided, well, we don't need him till next Christmas? Let me assure you, you're wrong. You need him every day. You need him in your heart and in your life every day. Verse 17. 
For the law was given by Moses. Woo, now listen to this one. This one gets me rattled and it gets it kind of cranks my tractors, they say. I know that I'm in good place when I can read this verse and it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, glory to God, if we have grace and we have truth, it came through Christ Jesus. Amen. And that's what separates us from the sin of this world is Christ Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Do you know him this morning? Is he close? Is he close to where you are? (laughs) Pretty close up here where I am. Amen. (laughs) I love him this morning. And I hope you do. (laughs) There's no better peace. There's no better thing. I can't buy things that satisfy us like God. Amen. There's nothing in this world that is like the love of God. Amen? Trust Him and obey. Verse 18, and I'm through, Brother Paul, if you'll give us a song. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Amen? <laughs> Amen. This son that Christ sent to the world is here. And he's making intercessions for you and for me that if we'll come and worship him and serve him, then we can have him in our hearts and our life. We can keep him 365 days of the year, not just a few weeks or in the month of December. We can keep God in our life all year, and he wants you to keep him close in your heart and in your life all year long to help this sinful world become a better place. We have a responsibility to our Savior, Jesus Christ, to serve him and keep him in our hearts and in our life each and every day of this year that our love for him might spill out to a lost and dying world and help them know this risen Savior, amen. This God loves you and he loves us and he wants you (laughs) to know that if you don't know that already, amen. (laughs) And if you do know it, you should be happy and be ready to do his will, amen. This God is a God of love and goodness and his grace is sufficient for all. Amen. Could we stand? Brother Paul.